All right, so we are res resuming our open session and I have Mr. O'Leary present, Mr. Walner, Mr. Schultz, Mrs. Gonzalez, and uh, me, Mrs. Manupelli. So we will proceed to the first order or the fourth order of business on our agenda and that's board, re board member reports. And we'll start <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a um, okay. couple of items, two or three items. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to uh, mention uh, the passing of a uh, longtime resident, a uh, person who grew up in the community and is a business person in the community, Laura Voto Salvo, uh, one of the owners of the, uh, of the Hornet's Nest. Uh, unfortunately passed away this, uh, this past week and was a uh, good, uh, vibrant member of the community. Uh, she was a graduate of North Reading High School and, uh, and again, uh, a co-owner with her husband, Dave, um, of the Hornet's Nest. And it's uh, you know, sad to report of her passing and a uh, tremendous person, uh, very vivacious and energetic and uh, tremendously compassionate and generous individual. And it's uh, unfortunate that uh, she lost her battle with cancer and, and passed away this week. At a, too young of an age. Um, the other thing is, um, and I, I know we had a discussion at the last meeting, the meeting before about the, uh, the elections and the uh, uh, mail-in ballots and all the rest, but I, I was wondering if we could, uh, and I know legislation is probably you know, going to need to be passed, but if we could just get a, a report back from the, the town clerk in relation to, you know, what is our ability, if the enabling legislation were passed to have a mail-in election, basically mail every uh, um, registered voter a ballot. Because, you know, who knows when this uh, virus is going to subside enough to allow people to participate. We have um, the town election coming up, probably not soon enough for that. But, you know, if the legislature uh, passes or enacts some legislation in between, then we should uh, give a trial run for the, uh, for the primary in, in September and uh, in anticipation of maybe a need to do so in, uh, in November. So just to put it on our uh, radar screen that maybe it's something we should be looking at, considering, and maybe even advocating for with our, with our legislature and the governor uh, to enact uh, some legislation to allow for it. Uh, we wouldn't be blazing a new trail. I believe there's five other states that do it. And uh, I think we should be looking at it because uh, we don't know how long this is going to last and we want to be able, we don't want to disenfranchise anybody, different, disenfranchise anybody and we want to provide everybody uh, ample opportunity to exercise their right to, to vote. So I just think we should take a look at it. And the other thing is, is that uh, stimulus checks are hitting. So uh, I know actually, I was actually hit our account today and I was first notified by one of my sons who said, hey, I think I got some money in my account today. So we have a lot of uh, clients and people who are actually awaiting it. And uh, so it's finally starting to hit. So people start checking your accounts. And um, again, if you don't uh, have a direct deposit with the, uh, with the IRS, um, go to the website and uh, take a look. There should be some sort of a link to allow you to uh, put the information in uh, so that you can get the stimulus check uh, sooner rather than later. Other than that, thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Waller. Thank you. Um, just two things. One is um, I continue to be very impressed by the group. Um, we're all in this together, 01864. Um, they've assembled 120 volunteers. Um, they've already had 60, 70 requests last time I've heard. They're being proactive and reaching out to the 500 households in town where people are over 60 and they live alone and don't have any support. Um, everything that I imagined five, six years ago, but wasn't able to implement, they put together in two months. So I think it's worth calling out um, Kim Manzelli, uh, Dan Greenberg, Catherine McCabe, Andrew Gladeau, Kristen McCabe, and Mary Prenny from the COA. And then Jen Ford's been right in the middle of that as well, who's our youth services director. So um, excellent job on their part. And I think even after this virus goes away, um, there's a need in town for this type of activity. And so, Congratulations to them. I also noticed in the um, uh, in the uh, transcript that uh, we're going to be seeing what road diet looks like in Reading. They're going to be uh, bringing their highway down to th three lanes, basically, and uh, that's something we've been talking about doing in our own town. So I hope the town residents pay attention to that. 
I'll also point out that it, according to this article, they started the discussions in 2018, and they're already implementing this right now. It's an experiment, it's a pilot to get started, but they're already starting to implement this. I had always heard anything we wanted to do on 28 would take us maybe five to 10 years. Apparently, the state's being more um, uh, cooperative and work, working with the town. So um, we should all pay attention to this because I think we all have an interest in uh, doing something similar within our own town and we can watch someone else doing it first. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Waller. Mr. Schultz? Yeah, just a quick report as the liaison to the Board of Health. I did have an opportunity to speak with Bob Racy on Monday and wanted to report that the Board of Health has implemented an order limiting the number of persons that can enter into essential establishments. Um, this action has helped businesses manage crowd control and social distancing, protecting their work base from getting too overwhelmed and getting sick. Um, I also want to report a lot of residents and seniors that have been calling the Board of Health saying thank you because they were extremely afraid to go to stores because of the crowds. Now they're feeling much more, uh, much less apprehensive to go to the stores. Um, the Board of Health should receive the second round of funding from the MDPH either this week or next. And the Board of Health has been working with the Harvard BU School of Public Health and will be getting six public health intern students to assist in contact uh, tracing. And the Board of Health has also developed weekly COVID-19 statistics for North Reading, and the town has um, been posting that, I think, twice a week. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes. Um, I would also like to offer condolences to the Decola family. Um, uh, people may remember Jim, who worked for the town. Uh, he lost his father this week, a 93-year-old World War II vet who I had the pleasure of knowing um, in my workplace. And um, I do want to send my condolences out to the Tacola family. Um, also, I took part in a briefing from the Mass Municipal Association for select board members and city and town counselors. Um, and I, to touch on what Mr. O'Leary was talking about with the elections, they were actually toying with drive-through elections. Um, they spoke about that um, almost like what they have set up for COVID testing. Um, their idea is kind of like, you know, pulling up, getting your ballot, filling it out in your car, putting it into the machine, sort of a driving through. So it's just an idea that they were toying with um, that I wanted to share with you. Um, I'd also love to shout out to our town administrator, Mike who did um, a reading with the kids in his house for the Flint Memorial Library and the boys were adorable and he did a great job. And um, I want to shout out to uh, someone who I don't even know, but um, Lynn Kelly has been coordinating birthday party parades throughout town for the kids in town. Um, and having people just drive by and have happy birthday on the car and whatever. I mean, it, I just think it's just such a great thing that these kids are getting some attention on their birthdays. Um, and I want to thank her for putting that together. And lastly, Peter Ricola, Saturday night dance parties on Facebook. I was dancing while I made dinner Saturday night and I, I think everybody should join in and it's a lot of fun. That's all. Thank you. And I, I do know Lynn Kelly, and I was going to also thank her as well for coordinating that. It's really probably tough on the kids to have a birthday now with all the social distancing, and that just makes it something so memorable. They'll never forget that. And they might forget a, a, a silly party somewhere, but they're never going to forget the birthday parades that she's been coordinating. And also Mrs. Bacora, who's in the, um, we're in this together too. She's always a quiet volunteer behind the scenes. We have a bunch of those people in town and and um, and, and I just want to acknowledge her as well in that effort because I think she's probably p playing a pivotal role there as she does everywhere else so quietly. And um, to thank the TA, thank, to thank our finance director, to thank our town employees again and our first responders and our public safety people. Everyone is still working at maximum speed and, and actually overdrive. And they're also with their kids at home, just like some of us are. And, 
and still being able to put in a full day and lots of time like tonight, a full night with us. So we really appreciate this effort and for, the, for our town employees for keeping things running for us. Um, and um, with that said, I will move on to public comment. Is Steve, you, you have your hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we're going to go back to you, Mr. O'Leary. I, 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 we forgot to mention that uh, you know we were postponed from Monday night uh, through because of Mother Nature, and uh, again, I think the response by you know our public public safety officials, uh, DPW, police, fire, and uh, more importantly, two Reading Municipal Light Department's response to the. Uh, the occurrences uh, it was very good and again part of the town was out without power and uh, happened to walk by the town administrator's neighborhood today and uh, they get hit pretty hard right there so yeah. uh, again I, I think just a shout out to those people too thank you yes that's true Our, we we had power restored yesterday morning too we lost it so on top of everything else <laughs> At this moment in time, segments lost their power. So yes, it, it, to Mr. O'Leary's point, thank you. Um, there was, you know, I wanted to get. I I knew there was something else I wanted to mention. It was it was part of the discussion on the MMLA, which is the lawyers portion of the MMA about um, remote town meetings. So in addition to people trying to sort out how are we going to do an election in the pandemic, I think they were there was considering some you know, alternative options for town meetings as well. So maybe we will see some outside the box thinking on that or some special legislation move forward because we are not the only town that's addressing both of those issues. So, but we did take a vote to um, have the town election on June 23rd. So that is right now, that's, we have rescheduled it as of now. And uh, I just want to make sure the members of the public are aware of that. With, with regard to town meeting, we're going to be addressing it later on in the docket. So public comment. Mr. Gilberta, do you see anyone here that wants to um, make public <clears throat> comment? I don't see any hands raised. You're muted, Mr. Gilberto. I see no electronic hands raised and scrolling through the video, I do not see any um, actual hands raised. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to uh, approval of the minutes of April 6, 2020 regular and executive sessions. And do I have a motion, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes, you do. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to approve the April 6, 2020 regular session minutes as written. Second. Kate frozen? Uh -huh. oh, I think Kate is frozen. So should we go ahead and vote? I'll take over. Vice Chair. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, Kate, you're back. I in. apologize. I don't know what happened there. We just talked about a power outage and maybe we just had one. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Did you make the motion, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes, we just need to vote. A motion? And who seconded the motion? I'm sorry. I did. Mr. O'Leary, if that ever happens again, please. He was it. I was just about to. <laughs> this is it, was, it, was, it, was not a, it was not a coup d'etat, you know. <laughs> uh, motion by Mrs. Gonzalez, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. Unanimous. Next motion. Madam Chair, I move to approve the April 6, 2020 executive session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. I vote aye. Unanimous. Next order of business is the COVID-19 update. 
Mr. Gilberto, you're on mute. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a very brief update with regard to the COVID-19 response. Uh, as I released uh, a little bit later than we were hoping to early this morning, um, we were at 52 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in North Reading uh, as of eight o'clock yesterday evening. 19 cases have recovered and the health department continues to monitor 32 cases. Uh, one case is deceased. I also wanted to uh, make the board and the community aware that you know there has been an ongoing focus and attention being paid to the issue of personal protective equipment for our first responders, for our um, for our employees who uh, may be in a situation where they're in close, required to be in close contact with others. As much as we've tried to limit those, and just this past Saturday we did receive a, a fairly significant shipment of um, materials from. Uh, through uh, MEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. So, you know, we continue to keep our eye on that and the public safety officials tell me that they are satisfied with the supply that we have for the time being. Obviously, as every day goes by, we use supply up. Um, they are being judicious in their use uh, while being also cognizant of the, of the risk. Um, and uh, we are going to continue providing updates with regard to the case numbers on a, uh, twice a week, Tuesdays, hopefully, and Fridays. And then, um, you know, as things come up in between, we will continue to provide additional information. Um, we are, you know, looking closely at what's happening at the state level. Um, we are informed that we are in the, the stretch where we're likely to see the highest incidence of new cases occurring. Um, you know, we are certainly mindful of that. Um, we've, we've taken some additional steps to provide protective equipment in the town hall for the employees that need to go in there as much as we are limiting that at this point. Um, and we're keeping an eye towards the May 3rd timeline and um, looking to better understand whether we as a state are going to be able to see any, you know, improvement or, uh, or changes in restrictions at that point or not. And I, I think we all are in the same boat on that. We just don't know. And that's uh, the update. Okay. Questions from Mr. Gilberto. <coughs> okay. All set. So we're, we're going to move on to our next order of business which is a consult with the town moderator we have mr john murphy joining us uh, regarding the continuing the may 11 2020 special town meeting and we also have attorney darren klein joining us for um, the meeting mr gilberto thank you madam chair um, we've been consulting with town council and with the moderator as well as um, as is required under the law public safety and public health officials concerning both the May 11th, 2020 um, special town meeting and the June 8th, 2020 annual meeting. And I, I believe that, it, well, I shouldn't say believe, we as a group, meaning that, that group, including the moderator and I, and those officials, those public safety and public health officials uh, are recommending that the moderator continue the May 11th, 2020 special town meeting to the evening of the June 8th, 2020 annual town meeting. And that further, the moderator continue the May, that, that May 11th meeting from June 8th to June 29th, 2020, and that the select board, because the warrant has not yet been posted for the June annual town meeting, also vote to delay the June 8th annual town meeting to the evening of June 29th. And so our goal is to conduct the business of both meetings on the same evening at North Reading High School, assuming that, the, uh, that the, the guidance allows us to do so and that the orders and laws allow us to do so, um, basically the last possible moment of the fiscal year. And uh, the reason we're asking for some guidance on this now is because it, it plays an important role in the planning process going on with the financial planning team, myself and, the, and the, the finance director concerning the municipal budget, the school committee and the school superintendent and the capital improvement planning committee, as well as the finance committee. It's a lot of work that's been going on in the background. And I think um, not only for the public health purposes, but also for the planning purposes, uh, a, delay, a delay in the manner that I described, I think will benefit us uh, all and is something that has been authorized by uh, recent legislation at the state level. Um, I believe the moderator is on here. I don't know whether he's able to 
um, speak or if he's muted. It looks like he is open. Um, I believe that the statute requires that the moderator consult with the select board. So the agenda item, and, and that's with regard to continuing the already posted special town meeting for May 11th. And that's the purpose of the first agenda item that we're on right here. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, I, I believe you were in concurrence with the strategy that I, I just outlined. Um, I, I guess I give you the opportunity to comment if that's okay, Madam Chair. Oh, of course. Yeah, I think um, as, we, as we discussed, I think last week in a conference call, um, what's going on in the, in the state and the country. I think it makes um, a whole lot of sense to move these things out. Um, I spend every day uh, on conference calls related to COVID-19. And I think, it's, I, I think it's important to give the community the opportunity to be in attendance at town meeting. And um, so I think it's important to to push this out and give the maximum number of people an opportunity to participate in the process. Madam Chair, our thinking is this. We, we know that there is a warrant for the June town meeting, excuse me, for the special town meeting on May 11th that was already signed to be posted uh, by the constable. And it was posted by the constable within days of being signed on February 29th. Um, our, our thinking is that we can afford our residents the opportunity to, to conduct the town's business in a sort of one-stop shopping type environment um, on the evening of June 29th, um, and that, um, that 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 would increase our likelihood of a higher turnout. Um, that when we look at the warrant for the June town meeting and the warrant for the special town meeting, that it, it you know, that it does seem achievable that we could do it within a single meeting. Um, if it did go to a second evening, we have the option to go to the uh, Tuesday evening, June 30th, would be the next night. I've talked with town council and that, and, I, and Madam Chair, as you're aware, the legislation actually allows us to go beyond June 30th for the town meeting if we were required to. Um, I think right now we've structured this so that that would not happen, but we are obviously cognizant that that's a possibility to, um, given the public health situation we find ourselves in. So uh, the way we have recommended the timing is that the special town meeting, the June annual town meeting would be scheduled for seven o'clock PM on June 29th. We would open that meeting through the moderator. And then um, shortly after everybody was in the room and seated, we would go right into the special town meeting um, to act on the two warrant articles that are on uh, the warrant for that evening. Okay, questions of the members. Mr. O'Leary, you all set? Mr. Walner, all set. Mr. Schultz, all set. Mrs. Gonzalez, all set. I just have a quick question logistically. If the special town meeting was already um, scheduled for that May 11th, how, how does it get postponed from there? Does it, is it still convened? And then cancel or continue? My understanding is it is not, but uh, Attorney Klein can answer that question. Uh, good evening, everyone. And I'm uh, wishing uh, through the moderator, Darren Klein from, uh, I'm sorry, through the chair, I apologize. Uh, uh, wishing everyone in town, you know, the best of health and uh, uh, wellness during this, this uh, difficult time. And I am uh, impressed by how everyone in the town is pulling together. Uh, um, as far as the uh, the special town meeting that has already been posted, the special act allows the moderator through a declaration after consulting with the public health officials and the public safety officials to postpone it for a period of up to 30 days and then also would allow him to postpone it a second time for a period of additional 30 days. So that's how he could he could uh, postpone it uh, to June 29th through that process, and we've outlined that we've actually not outlined it, we've detailed that in the declaration that the moderator has reviewed and may you know probably will sign, uh, assuming uh, he has the support of the uh, select board. But it is legally uh, able to do that. Where you are finding 
almost all of our towns are pushing their town meetings, whether they're specials or annuals that have already been posted or annuals that have not yet been posted. Everyone is targeting that same sort of 10 day period, June 20th on for their town meeting. Uh, we, you know, very few, if any, are gonna happen before then throughout, throughout the Commonwealth. Maybe a little bit earlier in some of the Western towns. Okay, any other questions? I am not seeing any. So is there a motion, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes, there is, Madam Chair. I move to recommend to the town moderator that the special town meeting scheduled for May 11th, 2020 be continued to June 8th, 2020 at 7 10 p.m. Did I read that right? Yep. And that it be further continued to June 29th, 2020 at 7 10 p.m. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. It's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Thank you all. I turned it on at 7.30, so you burned out my video camera. <laughs> have, have a great night and stay safe. Thank you, Mom. Mr. Gilbert, do we need Mr. Murphy for number 10? I don't believe so, but could we go right to number 10 and then go back to number 9, Madam Chair? But Mr. Murphy, hang on for one more minute, yeah, please. Absolutely. Yes, we're going to skip Sorry. over the revenue and expense plan. We Yes, and we'll move on to number 10 for a moment. We're going to review the town meeting articles and consider a potential delay of the June town meeting. Madam Chair, through you, I would just note that with regard to the articles, the list is still developing. Um, but what what has happened is we have received an additional article from the school department um, or school committee, I should say. Uh, it's article number 28 in bold, authorizing a lease for the LED lighting project. It is directly related to the prior articles concerning energy efficiency projects um, at the middle high school or possibly other school facilities. And um, we'll be having more discussion about that as we get further to the, uh, closer to the, um, to, to the town meeting. But that's the only change in the listing at this point. Okay. Uh, there is a motion with regard to the June town meeting and, um, and that is a, an action that the board can take um, on its own here to, I believe, to, uh, to delay the town meeting since it has not yet been posted by the warrant, uh, by the constable. And uh, it, it will, the mechanics of how this would all work is that we would intend to have a single mailing going to our residents with the warrants for both town meetings in it, that it would be mailed roughly three and a half weeks before the June town meeting June 29th town meeting so that residents would have it for at least two weeks prior at their homes. Um, as part of the previous vote that was taken and the action the moderator takes, he will have to sign uh, multiple, will be asked to sign multiple extensions of um, uh, multiple delays or, or excuse me, postponements of the May 11th uh, town meeting. Um, one which I'm assuming will be this week and then another which will be um, sometime around um, May 14th to move it, move the special town meeting to this night, uh, June 29th, just to be clear with the mechanics. You can't, it doesn't all get done in one step. It does need to get done in two steps. But we, through this vote, we've kind of paved the way for that to happen. And with that, there is a motion with regard to the June town meeting date. I don't think, Mr. Murphy, do you, you don't, do you have anything? I mean, we discussed it, so unless you have anything further to add. No, I mean, okay. I, I think it, it's the prudent course of action. Okay. All right. So with any, any other discussion, I see none. Mrs. Gonzalez, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to delay June town meeting June 29th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Schultz? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And I vote aye, it's unanimous. All right, now thank you, Mr. Murphy. That is a really thank you. We'll see you soon. Yep.
Thank you. Stay safe. You too. Okay, so we're back to number nine, fiscal year 2021 revenue and expense plan update. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. With us this evening is the finance director, Elizabeth Rock. She uh, will take us through some changes to the revenue and expense plan for fiscal year 2021, which were reviewed with the financial planning team at their last meeting uh, last Thursday. Liz, are you there? Yes, good evening, everybody. Um, can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll up to the top. Um, as the town administrator mentioned, this was reviewed last week with the financial planning team. Uh, we will go through um, each section. The top section is our tax section um, with um, new growth and 104 Lowell Road, Martin's Landing new growth. And we uh, have <clears throat> estimates uh, for new growth at this point, and we continue to evaluate those, those amounts. They can be um, or might be adjusted uh, downwards um, as, as we get closer to the end of the fiscal year. It's just something that we need to be cautious of. Um, going down to uh, state aid, it was a decision that was made uh, prior to the financial planning team meeting to uh, level fund certain areas of state aid. So we level funded chapter 70, um, unrestricted general government aid, as well as um, the charter school reimbursement and um, public libraries offset receipt. Um, the other areas that we did not level fund are reimbursable, uh, reimbursed space. So um, those we are leaving as as they are. Um, going down uh, to local receipts. Liz. Yes. Could I ask you to hang on just one second? Okay, so. Um, Excuse me, Liz, could you just explain for everybody's uh, information as to what unrestricted general government aid is, what chapter, you know, and how, again, you've level funded it at this point, but we may have to do it, but so what specifically goes into un unrestricted? So unrestricted, um, as we discussed at the financial planning team meeting, um, this number does include lottery, um, money that we receive from um, the state. Uh, we don't have the exact dollar amount yet. Um, I have an email out to um, our, our rep to find out what piece of um, this is made up of lottery revenue, but it is a piece of uh, lottery revenue. Um, chapter 70 is uh, local aid that we receive uh, for the school department. Um, any further explanation? Okay, hearing none. Moving on um, to local receipts. Um, motor vehicle excise, uh, we level funded to FY20's um, dollar amount. Um, we reduced it by $50,000. We had had that listed at um, uh, 2.7 million. Um, going down the list, we also reduced license and permits by 25,000 and we reduced um, meals tax by 25,000. So both of these items um, had been listed at um, $25,000 higher when we first did the revenue plan. Um, even in March, these, these numbers were higher. Um, and we even discussed um, potentially reducing these amounts further uh, as as we need to be very conservative going into the next fiscal year. Going down to other financing sources, there's been no changes that have been made um, since the last revenue plan uh, was produced in this area. Moving on to the next page, um, expenditures. 
Um, there have been no changes uh, to the expenditures. Um, we still continue to uh, monitor health insurance. Um, we and we are still carrying health insurance at a seven and a half percent increase over FY20, um, as well as including. Um, and the school's health insurance number and the municipal health insurance number, um, new FTEs, um, which we will continue to evaluate if that is still a possibility. Um, going down to the budget distribution, uh, you can see that um, we uh, have uh, 58 million um, to be shared between the municipal side and the school side, and it's it's broken down accordingly um, with direct um, expense offsets uh, for the municipal, as well as um, direct revenue offsets to the municipal side, um, with municipal departmental budget requests of 18 million and um, municipal. Um, deficit currently of uh, one point, almost 1.2 million. Um, and that is to the municipal departmental budget request. That is not the to the town administrators uh, recommended budget or um, to the finance committees or the select boards. And the schools allocation um, with their expenditure um, offsets and their modified level services budget of 33 million and they have a deficit or shortfall, budget shortfall of um, 738,000. Um, so that's where we stand today. You can see over here on the um, left-hand side, the percent allocations of how it gets broken down. So the municipal side receives 32.74% um, of the uh, 58 million that I mentioned over here. And the school receives 67.26% of the 58 million. Any questions? Okay, give me one second, Liz. Um, Mr. Schultz. Yeah, uh, Ms. Rock, I just want to thank you and thank Mr. Gilberto on, on taking a real conservative look at potential revenues for the next year. I do think as we go through this, the coronavirus and how it affects the economy, I think our receipts are going to have to be down. And I thank you guys for taking a real conservative view on that and putting, I think, our real numbers out there. Um, I, I think the town side and the school side are just going to have to tighten the belt for a year until we figure out where we're going to be revenue-wise. It's just going to be really hard. And I just want to thank you for, I think, being able to hear what's to be expected as far as the receipts that we're going to have coming in the next year. So that's all. We may even need to, um, you know, take another look and really, um, you know, reduce the items further. Um, but this was the first, first stab at it. But, um, you know, as, as we hear things, um, Statewide, we will um, take those into account as well. Thank you. Mr. O'Leary. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a, a first stab at it. And to, to Ms. Rook's uh, point, I, I think we're going to have to be looking at these numbers even more uh, going forward. Obviously, the state is still struggling to try and quantify where they think their revenues are going to be. And we've seen anything from three to five. And on today's paper, I think I read something uh, up to 14% reduction in. Uh, anticipated reductions in receipts uh, for state revenues. You know, if that's the case, I mean, we're gonna be facing, uh, they're gonna, the state is gonna be facing, uh, you know, tremendous uh, impact. And I think that they would be looking to probably hold the communities as harmless as possible, but I think we're gonna have to share in the pain here. And I would, I would expect that there'll be uh, some decreases in revenues from the state. Obviously with the lottery, I mean, the lottery receipts are significantly down. I think we'll be all right for this current fiscal year as Ms. Ruck has pointed out at the financial planning team meeting. But for the current fiscal year, we're gonna be okay, the one that ends June 30th. But going forward, you know, lottery receipts, meals tax receipts, um, and then as we get into, you know, what's happening with the economy, 
Um, we should be okay for the first couple of quarters here in the next fiscal year as far as re receipts from real estate tax payments uh, because the vast majority of payments are made through mortgage companies and, uh, and banks. But as people fall delinquent, then the mortgage companies and the, uh, and the banks will then start holding back on the escrow funds. So, you know, we, we have to take a very cautious approach, uh, be realistic about it, uh, and uh, pay it down as much as we can. So it's, it's not going to be easy. I think it's going to be somewhat painful. And uh, I think both sides, the financial planning team, meaning the school department, uh, town administration, finance committee present there, uh, we had good frank discussion. Uh, we're being very honest about it. And uh, this is the first first blush look, but uh, I think we can anticipate some more cuts coming forward before we settle on the final budget. So it'll be interesting to see what it's gonna hinge on is, is state if they can finally you know, put a finger on and, and give it a best guess as to what they think municipalities are gonna get is gonna play a significant role as far as what our final budget looks like. Hopefully we don't have to go to a 112 budget because even then, you know, that might be a little bit tight too. So uh, we have a lot of work to do and I think pushing out the town meeting certainly gives us, has bought us a, you know, an extra three weeks um, to glean what's happening, get a better understanding and uh, it's gonna be tough. So anyway, but I, I thank uh, Liz and, and Michael for their, their work and again, the, the cooperation between uh, the school department and town administration and finance committee has been extraordinary. So um, there'll be a lot more information to come, I'm sure. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner? Thank you. Mr. Walner, any questions, comments? All set? Mrs. Gonzalez? Questions, comments? Okay. Um, Mrs. Herbert? Oh, there we go. That's better. <laughs> no. Mrs. Herbert, you're all set? Okay. I can't see Don, but Don, you're all set too. There you go, Mr. Kelleher. Yeah, just, I, I think that just to to reemphasize the the point on on mortgages, even though they're most of them are being paid by banks, and foreclosures may not happen, but there's going to be forbearance, anywhere from three months to could be as much as a year, so that people won't be paying their mortgages. They won't be foreclosed on, but they won't be paying their mortgages. Therefore, they won't be paying their escrow balances. So I'm not sure um, how that will impact us. I can't imagine that the banks will be paying the escrow to us if they don't collect it. So I think we gotta, we gotta take that into consideration as well, that we may not, uh, uh, may not be seeing nearly as much real estate taxes, uh, even in the short term, uh, as we think we're gonna get. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Kelleher. And I, 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 oh, Mr. Schultz. Just one point, Don, I do want to clarify. The banks will still pay the escrows, even though they're not getting the monthly payment in because the banks don't want to be getting the property and have the mortgage wiped out. So the banks will keep making the payments, but I think your overall point is correct. You have a, a large dump, well, a sizable number of people who don't have a mortgage on the property that could be you know, seniors that have a part-time job that may have lost their job. And you're going to, you're definitely going to have a loss of revenue to the town. But I do think anything with a mortgage, the town will still see that money. That's the, I do want to clarify that one point. The banks will pay it even if they haven't collected it. I know they, yeah, because they, they want to protect they're, their interest. Servicing, servicing it, they've got to be paying Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, but I didn't know they had to, uh, had to pay the, uh, the well, they don't have to, but they selfishly do because they don't want to have a, a tax deed and then their mortgage gets wiped out. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But your overall point is accurate. We have a certainly a loss of revenue and that's, that's a problem. And that, yeah. Oh, Mr. Schultz. I'm all set. And Mr. <laughs> O'Leary. I'm doing it again. Like I do at the yeah, meeting. I'm looking at Mr. O'Leary calling him Mr. Schultz. Mr. O'Leary. Yeah. Just in relation to how the banks behave. I mean, I, I was a bank examiner for close to 30 years. And you know they'll they'll spend the escrow, and they may go another quarter or two. But after that, they're not going to do it because their interest is already perfected. If uh, the town were to foreclose for a tax title, they're still going to get paid. Uh, 
but they're not going to necessarily because their earnings are going to be impacted here too. So there's, there's going to have to be a cash flow problem here. And unless until the federal government assists the banks in paying the cities and towns, you know, we could see uh, a diminished uh, amount of payments from the uh, banks and mortgage companies. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, I would think, you know, as the economy goes along here and, and uh, the federal government tries to stimulate the economy, this is going to be one area where they're going to have to try and help and assist propping up the municipal governments you know, so we can pay our public safety people, pay our school teachers, because this is the vast majority of the revenue that we, we count on. Um, hopefully, you know, some new stimulus package, if it's needed and required based upon what happens with the economy, um, you know, they'll address that to allow the banks to make these things, uh, makes these payments and ensure that they're protected um, for the payments that they're making. So it's, it's gonna be interesting, but there's definitely gonna be a blip in the screen here as far as the revenue stream. Okay, members all set. Madam Chair. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, just a couple of points of information for the board and for the public. Um, you know, we haven't, you know, in the town hall, we haven't initiated a hiring freeze, but I, I can tell you that we anticipate holding a number of currently vacant positions uh, open and potentially not filling positions moving forward. So you know, any request is going to be very closely monitored um, and, and, and scrutinized before we bring additional personnel on. Um, you know, some of the exceptions that might be out there are the seasonal positions for which there's already funding or for which the work is dependent upon um, programming and programming revenues. If there's no program, there's no revenue, there's no revenue, there's no hours worked. Um, so, yeah, and, and that's, I think, you know, a pretty common approach compared to other communities. And the other thing that I want to just note is that Liz, myself, and uh, Mr. Kelleher have been talking with regard to the capital improvement plan. Over the past few days, we got some feedback from all departments with regard to what their absolute priority needs for June town meeting might be and what things might be able to be deferred to an October town meeting or, or later. Um, just because of the um, concern about our financial standing, but also the availability of um, uh, credit for uh, municipal entities out there in the market, which has been um, severely uh, restricted over the past uh, month or so. So that's an exercise that's underway. Uh, today we reviewed the feedback from um, most of the departments and, and, and talked about that. And uh, in two weeks after the next financial planning team meeting, there'll be further discussion in the committee about um, a possible, I'll, I'll call it, you know, bare bones capital improvement plan um, coming forward to the board for its consideration in May. So I just wanna keep everybody informed on that process as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. All right. Thank you, Liz, for um, Mr. O'Leary again. Just one other thing that, uh, Liz, you might just want to touch on uh, a little bit more in relation to our um, interest income that we've enjoyed up until this coming month, and then it's going to drop off significantly too because of the interest rates, correct? Sure. So, um, Last year, we took the initiative to reduce interest income, um, and we continue to do that again for uh, FY21 as well. However, our uh, CD is coming due uh, in May, and um, you know, as we all know, um, savings interest rates, money market interest rates, CD interest rates have been um, drastically reduced from when we invested uh, the sale of 104 Lowell Road uh, two years ago. And so we need to make some decisions on what we're going to do going forward with the 15 million that is currently on a CD. Um, <coughs> the remaining four that is uh, in a money market account earning almost, was earning almost the same as what the CD rate was. Um, so we do need to evaluate that as we go forward. Uh, but I, we're still not taking into account um, the full investment income, and we haven't um, budgeted the full investment income in the past few years either. So, you know, it is an area of concern, but um, we, you know, had already taken those steps to not budget uh, the whole amount of earnings. Okay. 
All right. Any other comments, questions? I see no other hands. Mr. Gilbert, no other hands, right? We definitely have our work cut out for us. Thank you for keeping on top of this. And I know that we're all anxiously awaiting figures from the state. And uh, we know that it's going to be tough. Oh, I, I, I think Stephen Chen, Miss, uh, Mr. Studo, hand this up a little bit. Yes, I see. Uh, hi, can, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm doing this from my phone, my computer. Uh, so just to piggyback on um, what Mr. O'Leary and, and Don said, uh, something else that just to consider that might make it even worse is that they're trying to clarify it, but uh, right now, the way the forbearance works for Fannie, FHA, and Freddie, once the forbearance is over and Congress hasn't clarified this, as of right now, the way the law is written, there will be a balloon payment due for all missed payments. So if you have a private mortgage with B of A, they're negotiating to add it, let's say, well, Bank of America to the end of the loan. But right now, let's say you do a four-month forbearance on a loan owned by Fannie. The way the law was written, you will owe the entirety of those four months once forbearance is over. So that could put significant strain on any homeowners, and I don't think that's really been explained to a lot of people seeking forbearance. So just something else to keep in mind that can make it even worse. Hmm. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you for the input. Anyone else? Does anyone else want to comment on our revenue and expense plan? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bleak outlook unfortunately and um we've we're, not we're, we're we're gonna have to go back and look at that i i appreciate the the team looking at it conservatively um but we may probably have to go back and really be more realistic given the predictions that we're all hearing unless we get some real numbers, which doesn't seem likely to happen anytime soon. So we'll keep working on it. We'll keep reviewing it. We'll keep um, going back and uh, I guess revisiting it as we get more information. Thank you, Ms. Rook too. All right, so we're gonna move on to our next order. Mr. Gilberto, <laughs> I can see you waving. So you're on mute. <laughs> All set? All right, so we're on to our next order of business, which is the extension of the Reading Municipal Light Department Agreement. And we're gonna review, discuss, and vote to extend the agreement. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as uh, we all know, uh, the Town of North Reading has provided uh, electric, uh, electric um, delivery, electric service delivery through Reading Municipal Light Department. Um, they are not, um, for the most part, a generator of electricity, but they are the distributor of the electricity on the grid here in um, in North Reading. Um, we receive that and are in that service agreement with them by virtue of an agreement that the town entered into um, um, a number of decades ago. <clears throat> and that agreement uh, expires every 10 years. Um, it does not expire in 2020, it expires in 2030, but it has a 10 year lead on it where um, we are required to give our notice of our intent to renew. And um, there, you know, I, I can tell you that uh, we are not here and have not really um, investigated much by way of uh, other options that would be out there because I think on the whole, there is a sense that we have, to the extent that we can, some input and some um, um, you know, uh, relationship with RMLD as an operator through our friends um, to the south in the town of Reading. Um, like any municipal utility, or for that matter, investor-owned utility, um, I think you know their, their their resources are stretched to some extent, and they're doing their best to try to balance the bottom line in the interest of the rate payer. And and at times, you know, I'm sure that that, and you know, we have seen that that has influenced the resources that are available. But on the whole, you know, we, we believe we've had a productive um, working relationship over the years with them. Um, and with regard to that, um, you know, I do have a recommendation for the board to vote to extend the agreement another 10 years. 
Um, I believe it was voted to be extended by the town of Linfield in March or even February. And um, I also believe the town of Wilmington, um, they've been discussing it in some, um, some measure for a few weeks and I believe they were gonna be taking action on Monday night. So we would be um, the, the last uh, party in the agreement. Uh, presumably the town of Reading obviously has maintains its membership. <laughs> So my recommendation is the board vote to uh, um, to extend the agreement, and we have prepared a motion. Hey, you're muted. I had said any questions of the TA, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just more comment. I mean, I, I you know, so you say decades ago, and I guess it was it was 30 years ago, in 1990, when we signed this. Uh, uh, original agreement. It was, I call it an original agreement only because uh, at the time uh, the town of Wilmington had been uh, uh, trying to separate themselves from uh, Reading Municipal Light Department and uh, between Reading, North Reading, and Linfield uh, we had to negotiate, renegotiate, and try and get Wilmington not to leave because while well, Wilmington isn't necessarily the, they're the single largest um, customer of Reading Municipal Light so that loss would have uh, meant a significant increase in cost to all the other remaining communities. So that we were able to strike the deal. So 30 years ago, we signed this deal, a 20 year agreement uh, with the ability to extend for 10 additional years. So, um, so I was happy to put my signature on that page 30 years ago and uh, happy to sign it again 10 years ago. And uh, hopefully this will take us for another um, score of 20 years. And uh, I hope I don't have I'm sure a lot of people hope, but I, I don't expect to be here for the next signature. Uh, but anyway, I, I again, Reading Municipal Light has been a, a good partner. And again, with that original agreement 30 years ago, they did form the advisory board, which gives us a seat at the table to, uh, on a regular basis, have a representative there, along with uh, representatives from Wilmington and Linfield, um, to give them feedback, input, and uh, offer our opinions and concerns on a regular basis and uh, I think the relationship over the last uh, 30 years has been uh, significant and been uh, very good. So I think uh, I think this is wise. Again, it's a good long-term solution again as far as uh, providing power to the community from a very reliable source and they've done a good job. So I look forward to putting our signature on it again. Thanks Mr. Ollier. Mr. Walner? Uh, no comment, just site happened to notice your signatures throughout all those documents too. So that's <laughs> pretty amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Walner. Mr. Schultz, all set. Mrs. Gonzalez, all set. Okay. Um, and seeing no other hands, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to authorize the extension of the term of the 20 year agreement between the town of North Reading and Reading Municipal Light Department and to sign the extension. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. It's unanimous. All right. We are moving on to the next. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a very quick update. The work continues with regard to implementing our, um, both our temporary and our long-term uh, water solutions with the town of Andover. Um, last meeting, the select board uh, authorized my execution of the administrative consent order with the Mass DEP, and I have filed that order with Mass DEP um, for uh, it to become effective. We have been working with regard to the necessary temporary water chlorination facility, which we have proposed to be constructed, or I should say located, not even really constructed, um, located at 327 Main Street, which is the Boston Flower Market um, uh, retail shop, as well as the um, golf uh, driving range and miniature golf course. Uh, and it's adjacent to some existing infrastructure that we have right there, um, very close to the town line with Andover. Um, we um, reached a agreement in principle as to the terms with the owner of the property for this temporary facility today. Um, we've had a very uh, cooperative discussion with uh, the, uh, the family um, over the past uh, few months. And um, that's led us to this evening where we have a recommendation for the board to approve 
and sign an order of taking uh, the next agenda item um, for uh, for this uh, temporary easement. This is a friendly acquisition that we're doing and um, we are expecting to receive and have conditioned the vote on the receipt of a waiver of damages uh, from the um, from the owner, um, which you know we believe we have worked out through discussions uh, with him today. Um, so with that, um, I, and I, I will just remind folks, this is a different location than the permanent water chlorination facilities to be located at 303 Main Street, which is the Dos Lobos Plaza, as well as our existing um, water facility on Central Street at the Andover line. And Mr. Chairman, it looks like the, the chair may have, um, Mr. Vice Chairman, the chair's cam camera or computer may have frozen up, it looks like. Very well, okay. Is there any uh, any question or further discussion? Um, <clears throat> Mrs. Gonzalez. I don't have the updated motion. Madam, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to Ms. Gonzalez, if you, if you click on the SB packet 413-2020 folder, um, not in the main packet, but I've uploaded the order of taking, um, which describes terms which were previously discussed in uh, executive session as was posted. And then there's a file, it's a PDF entitled 413-2020 motions number two. And that is the motion for the order of taking. Do you have that? Uh, let me see, I'm beginning now. Hold please. So, uh, Michael, it's not in the uh, in tonight's packet, or it is. It's it's in the meeting folder, not in the main packet. So I right. uploaded it after Mr. Attorney Eichmann sent it to me this evening. So it would be a separate. It's a one-page PDF file, separate wow. from the rest of the meeting packet. What is it? Title KP. No, it's uh, entitled four thirteen twenty twenty motions number two. Got it. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> All right, Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, Madam Chair, I move. Um, Chair, I move to adopt the order of taking in the form presented to acquire a temporary easement for water system purposes in the property at 327 Main Street, and to authorize the chair to execute the order on behalf of the board upon receipt of a waiver of damages and appraisal for such taking from the owner of the property. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Schultz. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Walner. Aye. Uh, Mr. Schultz. Aye. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Uh, I'm assuming the chair is voting. Michael, can you hear me? There yeah. you go. Madam Chair. Yes, I vote aye. I aye. can hear you. And the vice vote chair aye. votes aye also. It's unanimous. And um, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chairman, I, I just, uh, it looks like he may, may be on here, but Water Superintendent Mark Clark, um, DPW D Director Patrick Bauer, um, and yourself, I know have worked in different uh, points along the way. We've consulted with Attorney, Sh with uh, Mr. Schultz as well along the way um, over, uh, really, I think it's been two and a half years we've been talking with the family in various iterations. And so we're, we're pleased to be here this evening to have this very important and critical um, action um, be able to be able to be taken. I, I also want to just recognize the the work of our DPW staff um, and, um, and and the water superintendent and the now uh, water foreman Matt uh, Prince um, and the guys down at the garage for uh, putting their effort into constructing this temporary facility that um, allowed us to really uh, will allow us to really efficiently and quickly get get something in place there. Um, um, in a very streamlined way. So I, I just want to recognize all the hard work that's gone by uh, everybody. And gone, gone into this by everybody to make it happen. Um, we have more work to do and we'll continue to push forward. I think it's important if Mark could just give us an update again as to um, you know why this has come to fruition. Uh, the state has uh, is part of a part of the consent order. Um, this is this is a major portion of it. Um, if he could just give us a quick update and then uh, it'd be great. So Mark Clark, are you available? Yep, I'm here. There you are. Hope you can right. see me. Um, yeah, hope to talk. Um, so we, as 
the town administrator uh, indicated a week ago, you guys authorized him to sign that temporary consent order. We've worked pretty hard with the state in order to try to come up with a solution that would allow us to provide all the water we need from Andover through this coming summer season while we're getting the uh, permanent stations bid and constructed. Um, so that temporary or that administrative consent order has been signed and as Mike indicated, submitted to the state. Um, that allows us to kind of move forward very quickly with this. Um, it did include conditions in it that basically govern or permit this uh, temporary facility. Um, as Mike indicated, or the town administrator indicated again, we're uh, entering into an agreement with the owner of the property and uh, hope things are gonna go very smoothly from here. Great, thank you. Any other questions of, of Mark? Madam Chair, are you able to take over? Yes, I am. All right. all right, we're all set with that and we're moving on to the next order of business. I won't be able to see you, but I'm going to still run down the list like I typically do. Can you all hear me? Yep. Okay. Yes, indeed. All right. The next order of business is the approval of legal bills. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for February 2020 in the amount of 11674 as follows. Copeland and Page, General, 9315 34 Copeland and Page, Labor, 1248 20 Elm Street 40B project, 1,111.50 for a total of 11,674.84. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Schultz. And do we have any comments? You're gonna have to help me with this on Mr. Gilberto. Anyone have any questions? None? I don't see any questions, but I will offer a comment that we are getting very close with regard to this budget. Um, I think the spreadsheet should have been in there. Um, we are, we're getting to a situation where even with the articles in place that we have to offset the operating budget, we may, may require a transfer at the June town meeting to, uh, to balance uh, the budget. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to monitor things very closely. And as, as always, we try to be judicious and responsible with the use of this budget, but I, I do want to make the board aware that uh, there's a, is a increasing likelihood that we're going to be in deficit come June town meeting and we will come up with a way to address it at June town meeting. Very busy year this year. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Okay. If there's no further comment, I'm going to call the roll. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Walner. I said I, yeah, sorry. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye, it's unanimous. Is, and that's it for legal bills, right, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yep, that's it. Well, All right, so we're on to the next order of business, which is the town administrator's report. Yes, thank Mr. you, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a very brief uh, update. Uh, first, uh, the uh, Yard Waste Drop-Off Center did open for the season for its Saturday hours. This past Saturday, it is open um, on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, for uh, leaves, grass, uh, clippings, and, uh, and brush. Uh, brush pile is open in the back. And, um, you know, we encourage our residents to use that. We did have a curbside pickup that we uh, operated this past Saturday for those residents who were interested as well. Um, just some, a note from um, the North Reading Special Education Parent Advisory Council, um, and I know uh, Mrs. Gonzalez references, referenced this last week as well, but they, they did go forward with the Light the Town Up Blue for Autism Awareness Month in April. Um, the purpose of the project is to raise awareness and acceptance of autism and promote North Reading as an inclusive community. Uh, their volunteers strung up blue holiday lights around the gazebo in the town common and are seeking participation from local businesses, similar to what the town does each year for the holidays. They don't have any affiliation with any other organizations and would be purchasing the supplies with funds raised through donations. Um, per the Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Operations, Michael Conley, 
all donations will be deposited into a school account through the town treasurer because CPAC is affiliated with the school department directly and they appreciate the support and enthusiasm the town provided. And uh, I thank them for their work and the work of the Department of Public Works um, for cooperating with them as well. And uh, just a final note that I did not uh, go through in the COVID-19 update, but the, as, Ms. as Mr. Walner has indicated and all the members have indicated, there is quite a bit of human service um, effort going on here in town to support our residents who might be in need um, and to be prepared for a point in time when uh, maybe they aren't in need, but they become in need. And I just want to recognize not only the volunteers from In This Together 01864, including yourself, Mr. Walner, but our, our, um, our three human services employees uh, Mary Prenny, the Elder Services Director, Susan Magner, um, the Director of Veteran Services, and uh, Jennifer Ford, uh, Youth Services Director, who has uh, not only been conducting the outreach work on behalf of youth here in town, but also um, been sort of the lead liaison to In This Together 01864 for the Town Hall. And she's put a tremendous amount of effort in as well to make sure that our response is coordinated uh, was, I think, very directly involved in the Project 500 phone calls that were made over the past um, 10 days or so, um, researching the phone numbers to give to the volunteers. So I just want to you know, recognize the very important role that they are playing to try to keep um, the vulnerable or those in need in our community um, in mind, uh, to keep an eye on them and to keep them connected to the community. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, any questions for the TA? Mr. O'Leary? No questions. Mr. Walner? Thanks for emphasizing that point, Michael. That's the right point to make. Mr. Schultz? No. Mrs. Gonzalez? I'm all set. All right, and I'm all set too. And so our next order of business is old and new business. Mr. O'Leary. Um, again, just again, echo the town administrator's comments in relation to uh, all the hard work that's being put in uh, by the volunteer groups, volunteers throughout the community, everybody looking out for one another and uh, first responders. I also just wanted to mention uh, Mystic Valley Elder Services too, which continues to uh, deliver Meals on Wheels and uh, continue their outreach to the members of our community. And I also like to just uh, another shout out to um, local restaurants. Again, I know the Horseshoe uh, provided uh, Eastern dinners for a number of uh, members of our community free of charge and that encourage everybody in the community to support our local businesses, and local restaurants you know, during these trying times because, you know, we need them to survive. When this whole thing gets through, um, you know, they're taking on a terrible burden here, a financial burden trying to maintain their businesses. So every little bit we can do, take out a meal once in a while, support our local businesses. And again, during these trying times, uh, just uh, please remember to wear a mask. And again, it's not so much for your protection, but for the protection of others too. And so follow all the guidelines. Uh, let's, we're in this together and let's do the best we can. And I know it's uh, difficult changing our habits sometimes. And so uh, we'll make the adjustments, we'll do it together and uh, uh, urge everybody to, to stick with it. And we're doing a pretty good job here in town. We're very proud of us. and. Uh, continue to be so. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Mr. Walner? Just a friendly reminder to everybody, this is the fourth and last weekend on Sunday at six o'clock that we're doing that sing-along for Sweet Caroline. If your neighborhood didn't join in, feel free to come to Martin's Pond on Lakeside near my house at 57. We had about 30, 40 people stretched out across an eighth of a mile and uh, we had people from around town come and join us. So we'd love to have, it's last time, six o'clock. We'll give you the, the cheat sheet because it's not the normal words. It's appropriate for COVID-19, but we all had a good time, but we were appropriately uh, distanced from each other. So please come, six o'clock Sunday night. Social distance singing, love it. All right, thank you, Mr. Walner. Mrs. Mr. Schultz. On the subject of social distancing, I know it was the Holy Week last week for Christians and for many of the Jewish faith at Passover and I want to thank all the clergy in town I know the church has pretty much moved to online services and our church did as well to keep everybody safe and I know it's very hard for the, the pastors ministers priests that this really is their Super Bowl it's the busiest week of the year for them and it's really hard for them to have to not see their congregation and, and do these services online but everybody did and keep people safe and 
the parishioners were able to still worship, you know, from their home. And hopefully next year it'll be different. But I just want to thank everybody for, you know, following the rules and, and trying to keep people safe. And uh, happy Easter and hope everybody had a good Passover as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez? Um, actually, I have two two things now. I had one thing, but uh, Mr. Schultz uh, made me think of something, um, that if you are um, Catholic, you don't have to be. Um, St. Teresa's has the monstrance um, visible at the rectory window, um, which has um, the host, you know, so it's as if you are um, with Jesus there. So a lot of people um, are going into the rectory parking lot and able to um, spend some time with, with Jesus there, which is a great thing. Um, uh, encourage people to pray the divine chaplet if you'd like, um, or just spend a little time there. It's, it's very peaceful and um, a great thing that they did. Also, um, the open space and recreation plan is on its final um, piece. So we, I have posted on all the social media sites, um, the community connection, what happens in North Reading, and um, 01864. Um, there's an open virtual open house. It doesn't take long. Um, just looking for a little feedback so we can wrap this up. Also, Parks and Rec, I believe, have it on their site. Um, if everybody could just take a few minutes and, and just give a little feedback on that, it would be greatly appreciated. Is it on the town website, too? I think it is. I think it may be. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All set, Mrs. Gonzalez. Thank you. I'm sorry for not being visible to you all, but I am here and you all recognize my voice, so you know it's me. <laughs> we lost our internet connection here. So this is the challenges of remote meeting. Thank you everybody for your patience though and participation and I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez. Do I have a second? It's too Sorry. early. Too early to adjourn. Oh, do we? Have... <laughs> it's ten, almost ten o'clock. <laughs> so, miss, a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Um, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye, unanimous. Thank you, folks. Have a good evening.